Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this quick little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at 3D Studio Max and the material editor within 3D Studio Max. Now this, some of you got, might be familiar with uh, this particular model. It is the uh, orc, the juggernaut orc that I did for one of the tutorials up at 3dmotive.com. And this is the posed version. It's, it's just kind of looking like he's just standing there. It's actually several different um, groupings. If I if I grab each piece, you can see some of the pieces are grouped together. These are actually based on the textures. Like the textures uh, for this particular thing are all the legs. The texture for this is the helmet and the pieces and the gauntlet. Texture for this is the upper shoulders, etc. Here's the weapon. Uh, if I hit F4, I can turn the wireframe on or off. I'll just leave it on for now. To get to our material editor in 3D Studio Max, all we have to do is hit M. M is the default shortcut for the material editor. And this is what your material editor will look like. Now you can actually change right off the bat the, the number of slots for materials. I, uh, right now I use uh, the highest uh, division of them. But if you just click and then right click on any of the materials in it, you can see that you can go to a three by two sample window. That's this. So there's three by two. You can go to five by three. There's five by three. Or in my case, I like to use the six by four. Okay. Now these are the different textures being used on this particular model. To be able to create a texture, well, what you can do, like let's say, for instance, you have this particular model, you just want to grayscale it. You don't want it textured at this point. The easiest thing to do is you can just grab this default material and then hit this button right here, which is assign material to selection. So there you go. It's all grayed out. Okay. You can then, in fact, change different uh, things with. Uh, different attributes of this particular material. You can actually copy and, copy and swap a material. And just click, left click, drag, and drop. And it copies whatever that particular parameters were on that particular material. Could have done it this way. So I've just copied that. Let's go back to copying it. All right, and then I can actually, with the diffuse ambient and specular, I can actually change some of this. Like here's a specular. You see there's no specular. Uh, form here. So if I turn up this specularity, you can see that it's giving me this curve here. As you can see, that makes it pretty, pretty shiny. I can then actually make it more glassy by scaling up the glossiness. You see it gets it tighter right in here. So let me go ahead and grab those again. I'm going to go ahead and just apply that. So there you go. If I do a quick F4, you can see how shiny the pieces are now with that just a simple grayscale. You can adjust your specular levels. You can, you know, blow it out, make it really specular. You can drop it down. Again, you could drop it down until it's all, all the way flat. Same with the glossiness if you want. Just up to you. You can easily change the opacity on this. Let's say 10. And then, of course, as you can see, it basically grays everything out because you're now seeing some of the background. But you can see right there. It's it's pretty see-through. You get a nice X-ray effect. Sometimes you actually create something like this for maybe uh, the eyeball. Uh, as a, create a little uh, copy of the eyeball, make this the outside, and then make a, another sphere the actual color on the inside. But we obviously we don't want the opacity to be 10. We're just going to put it back up to 100%. Okay. Down here you have different things with the maps. You really don't have to mess with some of these. This is a very quick introduction. The only thing you really have to pay attention to is this maps uh, rollout. If you click the maps rollout, this is where you're actually going to set up your an ambient color, diffuse, specular, specular levels, glossiness. If you're going to have a piece that's going to glow, that's self-illumination. Uh, if you're going to do a normal map, then this is a bump map, okay? So let's go ahead and look to uh, create 
I'll get these assigned to the popper pieces. At this point, let's go ahead and grab the orc body. We're just going to assign it. There you go. We're going to get the upper body, the helmet. Let's see. Juggernaut upper. There you go. Oops, wrong one. And that's the fun of it. Until you get the right one, if, if you're not sure, if you're not looking at it, you can turn on and just kind of scroll through these. and You'll find the right one. There we go. All right. There's the head. Let's go for that. Should be there. Uh, let's see. Juggernaut upper. There we go. This will be the juggernaut weapon, which was what it is. And then this will be juggernaut lower. There you go. So we've got everything back as it should be. All right. It's very quick, very easy. Let's go ahead and just for, for a test to see what you can do, let's go to our maps. To add a diffuse map, you just click your diffuse and you click none. Okay, it'll bring up a little dialog box. We're just going to go for our standard. We just want a JPEG or a Targo or whatever. That's just a bitmap. So we just click bitmap and hit OK. And then it'll navigate to where you want to go to. In this case, I don't have anything in particular. We'll just go ahead and grab something. Okay, that's fine. All right, so we have the uh, bitmap set. Now we just have to click this, put uh, this button right here, which is go to parent. That just really goes up one level, all right? So in this case, we now want to add a specular color or a specular level. Usually it's a, a, a specular level is what I work with. So you can click none, and again, it's a bitmap. And then you navigate and you find some specularity. Uh, let's just go ahead and add that one, just so you guys can see it. And then go back up to the parent. For the bump map, it's kind of a twofold thing. With the bump map, you want to make sure you're going to have 100% power, 100% strength on the bump map. You want to click your none. Now, but in this case, since it's going to be a bump map with normals, we want to grab this button right here, normal map, a normal bump. We do not want the bit map. We want the normal bump. Click that and hit OK. That brings up an extra dialog box. OK what is the image being used as the bump map itself, the normal map. So you click None. This is where you now go to our bitmap. And once again, you can add in you know, whatever it is. There's the normal map. You can go up, up, and you're back at your main uh, area. You now have a diffuse, you have a specular, and you have a bump. The specular level, I usually use about 60. You guys can use something else. It's, it depends on the model. depends on how many lights you have in the scene. This doesn't have any lights. It's not even set up for something like that. But this is just basically, here's your diffuse, here's your specular, here's your normal mump. And that's a lot of times, most of the times when you're working in game models especially, that's pretty much all you'll ever have to deal with. Now there will be times when you might have an opacity map. That would go in here. Or you can have a, an opacity built into your diffuse color. Okay. Uh, you can even do a displacement map. If you happen to have a displacement map, it would go here. You would select it, uh, click on the, the the bitmap, hit OK, and then navigate to wherever your displacement is. All right. It's pretty sip, uh, pretty quick, pretty almost self-explanatory. And then once you've got the model done, like I said, if you've got this, we'll go ahead and hide everything else. So let's say here's the body. It's just got a base texture. Obviously, we don't want that. Once you've got what you want, you just grab your particular texture that's that's for this particular piece, and you merely apply. If by chance your uh, model, even if you've had, after uh, you've applied the, the texture, there's no color, it's just because this button is off, which is the show the map in the viewport itself. That's all. Once you've got that on, you're good to go. Okay, and that's pretty much it. It's uh, the 3D Studio Max Material Editor in a nutshell. It's pretty much all you're going to ever use it for. There's some other functionalities that you can explore on your own, but for the most part, most 99% of the time, you're going to use it just to add a specular map, a diffuse map, and a normal map. And that's it. Anyway, this has been 3D, uh, 3dmotive.com, and my name is Stephen G. Wells. I hope you guys have had fun, and thanks for watching.